Right. All right. Let's just get in the idea. So we're really, we got to get to the, the idea. If I give you a, a quantity that is a vector, you need to get us components using Sokoto, and we'll do lots of examples of it. But as in components already, so I have these problems. A is 10x minus 5y, and B is negative 6 plus 3y. What is A minus B? What is A minus B? So here's my A, there's my B. I'm looking for A minus B. Sixteen minus eight. How did you get that? So you say sixteen x hat minus eight y hat, right? <coughs> that is correct. How did you get there? So you're going to have. So let's write it all out in all its pathetic glory. Ten x minus five y minus b, right? What is b? B is negative six. Plus 3, what is negative b? Negative b is 6x hat minus 3y, right? Do the math. Well, 10 plus, why am I going plus? Because when we're adding vectors, I'm adding vectors, so a plus b. To subtract vectors, what do we do? A plus the negative of B, right? Remember that from last class? So 16x hat minus 8y. Why isn't it 10 minus 6? Because last class, when we talked about adding vectors, you have to follow this rule. A is a minus b would be a plus the negative of b. Yeah, you got to you got to come to an understanding that vectors do not add or subtract or multiply and divide like regular numbers. They don't behave the same as regular numbers. We're not ever going to get to the point where we multiply vectors. But any of you have taken calculus and you ran into the cross product and the dot product, that's multiplying and dividing, that's multiplying vectors. And there's two different ways to multiply vectors. So just keep it simple. Just recognize they're not going to multiply and add the same way that real numbers do. Questions? Hey, example of how you'd use this. A plane has an air velocity of 0 to 200 kilometers per hour, and it's in a wind that has a velocity of 20, 0 kilometers per hour. I'm giving you already the components. Giving everything in nice components. What is the ground speed of the airplane? What is the actual ground speed of the airplane? And what is its you know, what what angle relative to the y-axis. So now I'm telling you which that last statement ang relative to the y-axis is telling you which angle you need to find when you draw your picture. Well, what's my picture? I got an airplane flying like that, right? at 200, and I got wind speed going like that, so that's V wind, and that's at 20. That's the actual ground speed, the V sub G, right? Airplane flying in that kind of wind would fly actually like that, is how it would fly. If I want the airplane to fly straight north, what do I need to do? What do, what do I need to do with the airplane? I need to turn it into the wind and fly. <clears throat> if I want this airplane to fly directly north, I need to fly at that direction. If I fly my airplane at that direction, 
then I will go straight ahead. <coughs> the airplane will actually fly straight ahead. <clears throat> Where else would you experience this kind of situation? Airplanes, and there's usually one other spot. Ship in the where I have current. So boats where I have a current. So I have a river. Water flowing like that. If you want to go across the river and swim straight across, what do you need to do? You need to swim against the current to keep yourself going straight across. It's the same kind of situation. <coughs> so how do I calculate what is the ground speed? Well, in component form, what is it going to be? It's pretty easy. In component form, it's going to be 2,200 kilometers per hour because I gave you everything in nice issues. What is the actual ground speed? What is, you know, if you're down on the ground and you're looking at that airplane, you're going to say, oh, look, that airplane's flying at 2,200. Right? That's exactly what you're going to say. And then your friends are going to look at you and say, what are you, an idiot or something? Right? Or, you know, a cop with the radar, you're doing something. You know, you're on the river on your boat. You're going too fast. And there happens to be a psycho cop. Well, you're doing 2,200. Yeah. Right, he's not going to say that. He's going to give you what is the number. So what is this number? How do I find it? So square root of 20 squared plus 200 squared. If I grind that all out, roughly 201 kilometers per hour. Now, my sketch is not really accurate. Right? It's really this and then a little tiny. But we draw things big enough so we can see what we're doing. So it's 201 kilometers per hour is what the actual ground speed of the airplane is. At what angle? The other thing is relative to the y-axis. So what angle am I looking for? That one right there. <clears throat> that's the angle. So you got to pay attention to what that say. It may not say relative to the y axis. It may say relative to the horizontal or relative to north. Or they may give you, you know, northeast, northwest, those kind of pieces of information that helps you recognize which angle it is you're really looking for. Because we are not asked to find this angle here. If you use the wrong sine or cosine or whatever, you will find that angle. And you got to pay attention to that. How do I find that angle? Based on what's given to me. I can use any one of them, right? So, uh, sine, I got the 201 now, I could use it. Sine is opposite. Over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent, what do I rather use? The tangent, because I'm not using a calculated number that I... So tan of theta equals, what is it going to be? 20 over 200, right? Theta is then going to be tan minus 1 of this 2 over 20. I grind that all out, I'm going to get 5.7 degrees. <coughs> Make sure your calculator is in degrees. The most common mistake with this kind of stuff on exams is you're sitting there grinding out and you're getting nonsense numbers, then you panic and then you stress, and then you can't figure out what's wrong. Your calculator is likely in radians. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. That's just one of those checks to protect yourself from careless mistakes. Questions? 
<coughs> hey, you got these two vectors, A and B. The magnitude of A minus B is closest to what? Well, how would I solve this problem? First thing I would do for myself would be what? What's the first step? Step one and two. Draw a quick picture. So I draw a quick picture. A goes this way, negative B goes the other way. I can do a quick sketch. That's my D. That tells me something. It tells me that my Y component needs to be a positive number, and my X component needs to be a negative number, right? Because the vector is pointing to the left. <coughs> okay. Well, A minus B. What do I have? Well, A is 4, 3. And what is B? Minus, is, I'm showing you multiple ways to do this, 7 minus 1. Right? Grind that all out. What do you get? Negative 3, 4. Okay, well, that's negative 3 and up 4, just like our perfect sketch here. But you won't make a perfect sketch on the exam. I'm not going to give you graph paper. But it's reasonable. It makes sense to what we have. Is my problem solved? What's the question asking for? A number, right? Well, what do I do? The magnitude is going to be negative 3 squared plus 4 squared, all square rooted. Well, this is 9 plus 16, which is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So the magnitude is 5. The length of this is 5 units, whatever the units are. Okay. Correct. Sorry. Magnitude of this one is 5. All right, we're going to do projectile motion, which will not be multiple vectors most times. Then we're going to move into Newton's laws, where we're going to do this again and again and again, because you're going to have an object with three or four forces acting on it, and you're going to need to do the calculations. Do not forget anything that we have learned so far, because when we get into Newton's laws, all the stuff we learned that was on chapter one is in play for quite a while. We're going to keep using what we already know.